everybody, welcome back to a new video. I'm excited to show you guys the new lineup from EcoFlow, and this is the River 2. Now, I thought it'd be helpful to have both versions here on the table. Now, this is the River Pro. Now, the River series, the old version, was offered in three different sizes. You had the River, the River Max, and the River Pro. Uh, this was actually a trendsetter for a lot of the power stations that you see today. EcoFlow was one of the first ones to offer a regulated DC output. Uh, full pass-through charging, smart app connectivity. They had a great display and uh, just really fast internal charging on this power station. You could get it full in about an hour and a half. Now, they took all the great things from this series of power stations and upgraded it to the River 2. And this one here on the table is the smallest version available. They have three different sizes. You have the River 2, the River 2 Max, and the River 2 Pro. Now, one of the best things that they've done is they have actually upgraded the batteries in here to the newer trend in power stations, which is LFP. This has lithium iron phosphate batteries inside. It's rated at a full 3000 charge cycles to 80% capacity, whereas the older versions were, had lithium ion batteries or NMC chemistry, and they were rated at 500 charge cycles to 80% capacity. So you get a much longer uh, lifespan and a safer battery chemistry with the newer lineup. Now in the remainder of the video today, we will be discussing the smallest option of the River 2 lineup. Just be aware the other two options offer some upgrades over this one like larger inverters and larger internal batteries for longer run times. Now there are a few other features I failed to mention that are an upgrade over the previous generation. For example, this has the EPS backup function where you can swap over to the inverter within 30 milliseconds. Now it's not ideal for sensitive electronics, but it does work. This also offers a faster charging rate than the previous generation. This will charge up to 100% in about an hour versus 1.6 hours on the older generation. And this also offers a USB-C bi-directional port, meaning that you can actually charge this with a USB-C power source. So this one will charge at 60 watts power input via USB-C. And the two larger options, I believe, have 100 watt ports on them so they can charge a little bit faster. Now in the rest of the video, we will be discussing the DC output and how it performed. We'll be talking about the AC inverter and how well it works, see if there's any noise or any voltage drop or anything like that on the AC inverter. And then we'll be discussing the charging options for this power station. So I hope you guys are excited to learn more about the River 2. Let's go ahead and jump into the DC output testing. Now it's always important to test a power station to make sure it stands up to its advertised ratings and capacities. And that's what I'd like to do with the DC output on these power stations. Now this one, you have a 12 volt cigarette plug with no dust cover. Now, if you want more DC output options, you have to go with the larger Max or Pro models in the River 2 lineup because those will actually have 5521 barrel connections as well. Now testing to see if this is regulated, I plugged in my battery load tester and I was able to get 12.5 volts throughout the entire state of charge, so it is regulated. And to see how much power I could pull from that 12 volt socket, I turned up my battery load tester and I was able to get right around 100 watts output before it shut off from being overloaded. So plan for 100 watts if you are trying to use that 12 volt cigarette plug. Now these are always advertised to have a certain capacity. This one is advertised to have 256 watt hours of capacity. It's important to see how much you can actually get as you discharge it all the way down. So I started with a 100% state of charge, plugged in my battery load tester and discharged it all the way down until it shut off. And I was able to pull a total of 228 watt hours or right around 89% of the advertised capacity. So very efficient output. Now, another way to test the DC output for how efficient it is, is to leave it on at 100% state of charge and come back after a long period of time and see how much power you lose over that given amount of time. So I started at 100% and came back over 12 hours. And when I came back, it was only at 96%, meaning we lost 4% over that entire period or around 0.4% per hour. So very efficient. Uh, no issues about leaving the DC output over a long period of time and losing a lot of power. Now, one of the best ways to test one of these small power stations to see if they have any auto shutoff settings or any bugs about, you know, turning anything off randomly is by plugging in a 12 volt compressor fridge. So I plugged in my Iceco Go 20 12 volt compressor fridge to the cigarette plug and started at 100%. And when I came back 12 hours later, it was down to 36%, but it was still running the 12 volt compressor fridge, so no issues there. So just be aware this will run a 12 volt compressor fridge without any issues, but it is kind of a smaller battery, so you don't have that long of a runtime. Now, I really like the form factor and design on this power station. It is super lightweight. It only comes in a little bit over seven pounds. 
Now I like that they've changed it so it has a flat top. The previous generation had a big handle here. So you can stack things on top of the power station. Also, they moved the handle to the back. So it's just kind of out of the way. I like that design. Now, unfortunately, there is a missed opportunity from EcoFlow here. There is no wireless charging pad on top for charging a cell phone. So if you are looking for that feature and you have to have it, then you're gonna have to pass on this power station. Now, looking at the bottom, you have three USB ports. Two of them are Quick Charge 3.0 or USB-A fast charge ports. And then you have a USB-C bi-directional 60 watt port. So you can actually charge another device. I plugged in a power station and was able to charge it at 60 watts. And if you plug in a power source to this 60 watt charging port, you can actually charge the power station at 60 watts. So it's pretty cool to have that bi-directional charging. So overall, fairly capable power station for charging up your mobile devices. Now in the next portion of the video, I wanna talk about the AC inverter on the River 2. Now it's advertised to have a 300 watt pure sine wave output. Now, if you look at the front, there are two different AC plugs. One has a grounding plug and one does not. Now you wanna make sure you don't go over the 300 watt limit. You can plug in maybe a very small heater, like a micro heater. You can charge laptop batteries and maybe some drone batteries, things like that. So you just want to make sure you stick to the 300 watt limit. Now, a great way to test the inverter output on a power station is put it under a max load for 15 minutes to make sure it doesn't overheat, doesn't have any voltage drop, and to make sure the fans aren't too loud. So I started a 300 watt load with a 15 minute timer. And within a few minutes of starting the test, I plugged in my oscilloscope and I was getting 120 volts output, which is a really good level. And swapping over, I was able to get a pure sine wave inverter sitting at 60 Hertz. So the power output from the power station is very good. Now, after about 12 minutes, the test had gone by, I pulled out my decimal meter to see how loud the fans were, and they were only putting out 45 decibels. Now that is very quiet. This is what it sounded like. Now the power station did run the full 15 minute test and I didn't have any issues running the 300 watts for that length. So thumbs up there, the AC inverter did pass that test. Now EcoFlow advertises the River 2 to have the EPS backup functionality. So if you have a power outage, it does swap over to the battery backup inside within 30 milliseconds. Now they don't call it a UPS mode because it's not quite as fast. Now I plugged in my studio lights and you can see when I unplug this from the wall, it did flicker and swap over to the backup functionality or the batteries inside, Three, but just be aware two, it's not as one. fast as a true UPS and it does not support um, sensitive electronics. Now bear with me, there are a few more tests that I like to do on the AC inverter. One of them is to see if the AC inverter puts out any noise or interference. So I plugged in my guitar amp while the AC inverter was enabled and this is what it sounded like. So as you can see, there was a little bit of interference on the AC inverter. So if you are trying to run some really sensitive electronics or ham equipment, uh, you won't want to do that on this AC inverter. Now to move forward with the other two tests, the first one was a complete discharge and capacity test. And with this being rated at 256 watt hours of capacity, how much of that do we get as we discharge it using the AC inverter? Well, after I discharged it with a 0.2 C rate load and having a inline watt meter tracking all the power going out, I was able to pull a total of 190 watt hours or right around 74% of the advertised capacity. Now this is definitely short of our goal of 85% and not super impressed with the efficiency there. Now those results kind of hint to the fact that this uses a lot of power in the background. So one way to test that is by charging this up to 100% and leaving the AC inverter on over extended period of time to see how much power it uses. So starting at 100% and then over 10 hours I came back and it was at 56%. So it used 44% over a 10 hour period or around 4.4% per hour. Now, just to give you an idea, most power stations are around 1% to 2% per hour. So 4.4% is fairly high. So there we go. That's why we didn't get very good results on the discharge test through the AC inverter. So kind of mixed results here. It did really well with our 300 watt max load test, but it didn't do very good with the actual noise test and the efficiency testing. Now in the next portion of the video, let's go ahead and talk about charging up the River 2 and show you guys some of those demos. Now just keep in mind the River 2 Max and the River 2 Pro do charge a little faster off solar charging. This one is limited to 110 watts. So looking at the back of the power station, you have two charging inputs. You have your AC charging input. Now EcoFlow does include a charging cable. There's no external charging bricks and you just plug that into the back and it's going to charge up off AC power. Now your DC input source is a male XT60. 
Now it supports 11 all the way up to 30 volts with an eight amp input limit and it's gonna sit right at 110 watts max. Now they do include a 12 volt cigarette charging cable with the power station and there's no solar charging cable included because they include that with their solar panels. Now, when I actually tested out the DC charging input, I was able to get 96 watts charging input, which would basically fill this up in about a three hour time period with a 12 volt battery. And I took this outside to test it with EcoFlow's 220 watt solar panel and I was easily able to hit the 110 watt limit uh, charging on this. Now, what's really interesting is the AC charging input. When you plug in the AC charging cable, it will charge within one hour if you have it set to max charging. And within the EcoFlow Smart App, you can change anywhere from 50 watts all the way up to 360 watts. So pretty cool to adjust the charging speed. Now, you also have the ability to charge it up using the 60 watt bi-directional port. So if you plug in a power source, it will charge at 60 watts via the 60 watt USB port. Now I did try dual charging uh, with AC and DC, and basically it always seems to prioritize the AC charging input. And if you try charging off of USB-C and DC power, it kind of just chooses the one that will put out more power. So keep in mind, dual charging is not really supported on the power station. Now, as for pass-through charging, I did test to see if we could uh, use the power station and charge it at the same time. And it did support pass-through charging with 30 minutes without any issues. So overall, this is a fairly uh, capable charging device. I would have liked to see a little bit more solar input, but I'd love the fact that they added a bi-directional USB-C port. Now, when talking about the display on the power station, they have updated it to be an actual smaller display. And instead of having two different colors, it only has one. So it's actually a more simple, power efficient display. And you can set the timeout period for the display in the smart app. Now, talking about the actual smart app connectivity, you can connect with Bluetooth or Wi Fi. So if you want to just be more private, just connect with Bluetooth. And if you want to put it on your Wi Fi network, you can actually connect to the power station remotely anywhere in the world as long as you have the app and you can see what's going on. Now that app is available on Android and Apple and you can see all your input and your output. You can turn all that on and off and you can also adjust many of the settings. And that's why I really like the EcoFlow app is you can set out the timeout settings for the AC or DC output. You can set up how much you want it to charge and discharge from 100% to 0% or 50% to 80. I mean, you can basically change a ton of different things. Uh, you can set the charging speed and you can update the firmware. So if there are any weird bugs, they can push out new features or push out bug fixes via the smart app. So very impressive uh, app connectivity with all EcoFlow's power stations. Now, another thing that's really great about their app is there is a support feature built in. And whenever you have an issue with their products, you just open a support ticket in the app and they already have all your information, which is really cool. So for example, I had an issue with my River Pro, the DC output broke and I opened a ticket and within a couple weeks, I had the new one at my door and I shipped back the other one. So very impressive support and warranty with EcoFlow products. Out of all the power station companies that I've tested, EcoFlow has always been the best with their warranty and their support. Now, speaking of the warranty, this has a two year warranty, at least that's what it says in the owner's manual, but I have heard rumors that they're making all their power stations with a five year warranty that have LFP batteries. So that would be really cool to have a five year warranty on this. That would be uh, you know, industry leading. So we'll have to see about that. I'll have to provide an update down in the comment section if I find out more information about that warranty. But now for every power station that I review on the channel, I actually put it through my new power station grading system to give it a score of one to 10. And this kind of shows which features that it's missing or which features it has and any other major issues that I find. And then we can compare it to the competition. So I do have that down in the video description. Let's go ahead and go through the results of this power station. And then you can see how it compares against the competition. So starting with number one, can this charge up to 100% in less than four hours? Yes, it can, we'll give it a point there. This can charge up to 100% in less than an hour. Number two, does this support pass-through charging, meaning that you can charge it and discharge it at the same time? Yes, this does, we'll give it a point there. Number three, does this have a pure sine wave inverter, putting out 120 volts without any noise? Now, unfortunately, we did have noise on the AC inverter and it wasn't super efficient, so we're gonna give it a half point there instead of a full point. Number four, does this have a regulated DC output? Yes, it is regulated right at 12.5 volts, so we'll give it a point there. Number five, does this have an informational display? 
Yes, the display is excellent and you also have the smart app connectivity so you can find out anything you want to know about the power station so we'll give it a point there. Number six, are there any weird auto shut off settings or did the power station ever randomly turn off the AC inverter or DC output? No, it didn't so we'll give it a point there. Number seven, does this support bi-directional 100 watt USB-C power delivery? Unfortunately, it's only 60 watts the River 2 Max and the River 2 Pro do have 100 watts, but this one does not, so we'll only give it a half point there. Number eight, does the power station meet at least 85% of its advertised capacity? Well, in our DC output test, we are able to get 89%, so I will give it a point there. Number nine, will this charge up to 100% using solar panels? Well, with 110 watts charging input, it'll charge up to 100% in three hours, so we can give it a point there. And number 10, the final one, this one has to do with the actual price per watt hour on the power station. Now this comes in at a sale price right around $210. So if we compare that, it's 81 cents per watt hour. So we can give it a half point there because it's above 80 cents a watt hour. So after we total up all the points here, that's 8.5 points out of 10 points available. So a fairly decent score. So remember to check down in the video description and click on my power station grading system so you can see how this compares to the other 300 watt hour power stations that I've tested on the channel. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the video and I always like to give a few final thoughts or pros and cons about a power station so you guys know if it's gonna fit your particular use case so you guys can make the decision if this one's right for you or not. So let's go ahead and start with the bad stuff first, get the cons out of the way. Now the first con in my opinion is the fact that they did not include wireless charging on this. Now most power stations come with wireless charging, at least one wireless charging pad, and with this perfect flat area on the top of the power station, it's kind of a bummer they did not include that. Now the second con is the fact that these are not expandable. Now if you look at the previous River line and even the Delta line from EcoFlow, they're kind of the ones that started expansion batteries and this is not expandable. So maybe they're just kind of wanting you to buy the Delta series if you're looking for an expansion battery. So you'll want to make sure you pick the right size from the beginning. So the larger the load, the bigger the power station you're gonna to wanna to go with. So maybe you'll wanna go with the River 2 Max or the River 2 Pro if you need something larger than 300 watts. And the last con in my opinion is basically just the AC inverter on this. We did not get very good uh, capacity results. The efficiency wasn't good and we had a little bit of noise there. Now, it did do really good on the max load test of putting out 300 watts and a pure sine wave inverter, but I guess maybe you just have to pay for that with less efficiency. So just keep that in mind. We did not do very amazing on the AC inverter testing with this power station. So this is kind of designed for USB devices or 12 volt output. We saw very good results there, but just not very good results with the AC inverter. Now let's go ahead and talk about the pros. There are quite a few pros on this. The first one being that it has lithium iron phosphate batteries over the lithium NMC of the previous generation. Now I like the fact that they've upgraded because it's a safer battery chemistry and you get many more charge cycles, you know, rated at 3000 charge cycles to 80% of the original capacity. Now the next pro is the fact that this charges so fast off of AC wall charging. You can charge this in less than an hour when you plug it into the wall to get it up to 100%. So very impressive there. And the fact that it has EPS mode, it's not you know, super useful, but it's nice that they still included that in the power station. I'm sure there are some people out there that that feature will be useful for. Now, the next pro, in my opinion, is the smart app connectivity. I like that you can get Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity and the fact that you can basically update the firmware with this and change all the different settings. So huge uh, pro in my book to have that app connectivity and EcoFlow's app's one of the best in the industry. And the final pro, in my opinion, is the actual efficiency of the DC output. We are able to get very good capacity at 89% and it is regulated. So if you are looking to you know, run some small 12 volt appliances, this will do a good job with that. So there you go, the pros and cons of the River 2. Now, obviously this is just the smallest River 2 power station. I have not had a chance to test the River 2 Max or the River 2 Pro, so those could give quite different results, especially with larger batteries, you probably get better AC inverter efficiency. We'll have to see the other reviews and how those perform. So now I'd love to get a thumbs up if you guys like this testing video. And now we know, so check out my power station grading sheet to see where this one lines up against the competition. Now I'd love to get your guys' feedback about what you think about the new River 2 lineup. What features did you like? What features would you like to see? And what were the good and bad things about the power station? So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.